All right, folks, so I'm going to be going over a couple of things today. One is the model. This is the biggest problem in uh, folks because they think they can study Wyckoff by looking at a schematic. You know, the shortcut. This type of shortcut will not teach you uh, Wyckoff. It, it, there's a reason why there's a Wyckoff course and why this one picture is not Wyckoff. It wasn't written by Wyckoff, wasn't created by Wyckoff. It's just a model. And models are good, but their purpose is, is, is that it's a learning tool and this lists all the behaviors. So for you to understand, the error is applying the model as a pattern without details or studying the Wyckoff course. You cannot understand shit <clears throat> from this model and say, oh, this is Wyckoff without doing the Wyckoff course and understanding these and, and uh, really understanding what they mean and, and, and also just seeing reality. All right. So, I mean, this is a good model, you know, um, but uh, it's lacking. It's, I mean, it's, it's it doesn't, it, I don't know what to say. Maybe it needs a disclaimer. Like, uh, you know, you, this, this is just a theoretical model, but if you look at turning points, they do not have all of this ever. Or I mean, it, they have it, but seldomly will they have such a A, B, C, D. And I can show plenty of examples of that. Um, anyway, so the model's good, but... Oh, shit. Yeah. Typically, the sign of... I'm not sure if folks talk about this, but this area... It's actually this area that needs to be taken out. You see the high of the climax? That's the selling climax. When this area is taken out, that is important. Like what? Selling climax, secondary text. I get all this. Um, it's usually this area. Mm. Show you another model. All right, I'm gonna just explain something. Like what, what you really need to know is you have accumulation. Oh gosh, I can't even draw. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's do it this way: accumulation, markup, distribution, markdown. This is the cycle. All right. And this is distribution. This is nothing more than buy low, sell high. That's all it is. Everybody wants to buy low and sell high. This is uh, just another fancy word for buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high is identified by high volume here. And it's identified by high volume here. All right. Now, there's some intricacies, but literally uh, this is what you need to know when you have high volume on a pullback and you know what I'm going to just show the uh, examples so what I'm going to do is this is going to be a study of ending action all right you're going to see how these because uh, forget using the daily trends intraday trends I mean they're trends are trends right so what you're going to see here is how trends turn, all right, on an intraday basis, but a trend is a trend and um, occurring on time frames. All right. So what what you're looking for is um, one second. Let me explain this. Okay, so the first thing is. If you look at this turn, what do you notice? It's very simple. You have a left-hand side, 
and you got a right hand side. And in the middle, there's something that separates. There's a turn, right? We'll just call it a separation, separator, all right? This is every turning point, every turning point. It has a left-hand side and a right-hand side, and there's a separator in the middle that separates the left-hand side from the right-hand side, all right? Now, and uh, if you can, you can very clearly see this on a Renko chart or a wave chart that's placed on a bar chart, you'll see this very clearly. You just, every, you know, every wave chart ha is, is basically this. Rally, pull back, rally, pull back, you know, and uh, different size waves. So, everyone, every single one. So, you have a left-hand side and right-hand side. So, examination of the left-hand side is extremely important. How does the left-hand side begin and end? How does the right-hand side begin and end? Well, how it does it is with volume, high volume. Why is that the case? Why is that the case that this left-hand side is going to begin and end volume and the right-hand side is going to begin and end with volume? Why is that like literally almost always the case? Why? Because of one other model. Accumulation, markup, distribution, markdown. If you're accumulating, what are you really doing? And this is just a fancy word for saying buy low. And when and then mark up it begins where the price marks up. And when your distribution, it's just a fancy word for saying sell high. And when you sell high, market goes back down. Then the process occurs again and again. Now where the variation is, is that there are different amounts of accumulation and on different time frames, and the same thing with dis with distribution. All right. So when you buy low, you obviously have high volume because you're buying a lot. And when you sell high, you have high volume because you're selling a lot. That's it. All right. So when we're looking at this left hand side, this left hand side. is this is uh let's go is is this whole is uh is this yeah and then the right hand side is this so this is your left hand side and this is your right hand side, all right? So this left hand side, turn, go up, then down. This is up and then down, and underneath it, you have buy low, mark up, distribution up here, and mark down, okay? And in here, you're going to be seeing high volume and all that shit, all right? So now, just keep this in mind, all right? That this turning point, this pivot, this, whatever they call it, swing high, swing low, is nothing more than accumulation, markup, distribution, all occurring on this left-hand side and, and turning it to the right-hand side, okay? So, and now I'm going to prove it. Now I'm going to prove it. So this whole, this whole thing, let's mark, the left hand side and the right hand side. So this is your the hell, uh, this is your right hand side. God damn it. 
This is your right hand side, and this is your uh, left hand side, right? Yeah. That's your left hand side, and this is your right hand side, okay? And this is your top. This is your separator, right? And uh, that thing I created. A dome, right? So this is your left hand side. This is your right hand side. And this is your separator in the middle. Now my claim, and I think this is what Wyckoff was also explaining, why he was so big into what? Into climaxes. Because he knew that the left hand side ends climactic volume so he was always trying to catch the turn and that's why he, one of the reasons why he created the uh, wave chart there were three reasons why he created the wave chart one was to teach tape, tape reading two was for short-term swing operations or intraday operations and um, the third was like uh, I forgot the third but I think it was uh, tape reading swing. anyway there was a third reason also I forgot Anyway, so we look over here and you see a left-hand side and right-hand side. What do you see on the left-hand side? Oh, shit, right there. The high volume. Right there, identified, bingo. Okay, now, when, when you have this, what you need to see is a break after it okay otherwise it's not gonna work so there there are two scenarios the first is that it breaks right away the second is there's an up wave and then it breaks after this volume this high volume the two scenarios is that it just breaks right away or it comes up makes a final top and then breaks. When it breaks, what you look for is strength in the break. The strength in the break can come from two perspectives, obviously price and volume. From a price perspective, it will be a big wave. Here we have a big wave, bigger than the last eight waves. Or it can also be from volume. So it can be a, a big uh, wave, meaning a lot of volume, right? So um, that is also the case. You have a lot of volume, all right? Now, so it can be, and, and the third is obviously from both, from price and volume perspective. So we have the left-hand side selling. You have one final up wave. Then you have the, then you have the pressure the here the the follow through wave or whatever this the strong wave now you're on the right hand side left hand side has terminated and you're on the right hand side this is the right hand side okay so i showed the volume on the left hand side and top and now on the right hand side typically the right hand side you will see heavy uh price and volume or just price and typically it's price and volume though. But you could tell that this is on the right hand side. Now we take another look. Let's take a look at this top. Oh shoot. All right? So you have a trend. Go for the low. And you'll see this low to the high. going up and going down, yeah? What do you notice? High volume at the top here. And so this is all left-hand side, let's mark it. Right, 
top and then the heavy selling. So now you're on the right hand side. You're on the right hand side. You have your volume off the top or your climactic action. Basically sell high, basically distribution, buy low, sell high. After selling high, you have the pressure come in. You are on the right hand side. Okay. Now you might be asking, well, what about this pullback? Prove to me here that there's a turn. Where is the left hand? This is the left hand side now, right? This is the right hand side of of this separator. And then here you have a turn. So prove to me that you have high volume uh, here. It's there, but it's on a minor scale because this was a smaller pullback. Okay, meaning like it's a small move, but it's there. If you look over here, you see big red. See right there? That's, it's not a, you know, big spike, like a biggest in 100, but it's the biggest in 14. Right there. Right there. And what do you have immediately after it? A follow through with four green bricks, which is what is validating that this is volume off the bottom. See, right there, the red volume increases. Is this a breakdown? No, it's going the other way. This is clim climax because it's going the other way. If it was a breakdown, it would be continuing to go down, but it's the fact that it's going the other way makes this a climax, an ending action. So here you go. Now, again, lo and behold, This is all one trend. Until here. And I'm not saying this is easy to read. I'm saying that, you know, it, it's not, uh, it's not easy to read, but it can be done if you have the model in mind. So over here, you have a top, you have volume uh, at the top, what is this? Yeah, there it is. Which is your ending action. This is your ending action. And this is the follow through down proving to you that this is a climax. See, it can be a climax or it can be a breakout, a very strong breakout, a little too strong, right? Because look at the volume here, spike. And what happens? It it went it goes down. So clearly, this is an area of selling. One more time, when they go down here, they try to bring it back up. Again, what do you get? Some type of volume off the top and a reversal back down. The problem is, it never came back to test, so you, you're screwed. You know, you can't get the entry. Uh, and actually it was a retest of this volume of the top. Now I'm not saying that it works 100% all the time because a lot of times there's preliminary buying and preliminary selling. So right here, for example, you have to some degree volume off the top and then you have a selling wave, but it, it, goes, it goes beyond, creates a climax and then the selling comes in. So I'm not saying that, you know, Eureka, that, that's it. You know, but but this is, in general, you want to see an uptrend and then see the termination. And it should be at, at a level as well. I mean, ideally. Here, for example, again, you know, again, you have a move down, selling, test, bingo. What do you have at the lows? 
volume at the bottom and the rally proving itself proving itself that this is not a breakout this is a climax that climax is followed by the proof that it's a climax and don't say that this is a climax also this in fact it's not a climax. This is too. Uh, this cannot be a buying climax because it, it it's too close to the downtrend. It has to be after multiple waves. So this is typically as a result of you know trying to take out this resistance area, trying to break out above it. So volume at the top and the bottom. I mean the characteristic is at the top and at the bottom of a trend, not against the level. That is a breakout. Right, so you and you have to have multiple waves down and multiple waves up for the trend to be up or down. Anyway, the point here is this is what is it right there, right there, done. There's your ending action, there's the separator. You're on the right hand side now to get the pullback, write it. Here, okay, volume at the top, proof that it's volume at the top, that this is not a breakout, this is a climactic action, goes down, test, goes down, retest, goes down, again, this is not a breakout, it's climactic action, how do you know, because left hand side and right hand side has more selling, proves that this is not a breakout, and uh, This one didn't work because this is not at the bottom and not at the top. If it was here, it would have worked. Like right here, proof, test. All right, so what am I trying to do here? So I have showed you a model that is built on reality that in a trend where you have where you have this type of behavior of a trend up and trend down on the left-hand side is split from the right-hand side and that up here, it looks like this. Up here, the top is going to look like high volume, right at the tops, and then proof, and then that's it. All right, I hope this has been helpful for you all. Take care. Bye.